Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Idea. Really quick, I just wanted to put up a pile of possibilities for nonfiction November. These are not going to be all the books that I will be pulling from, but these are the ones that I have on my radar that I really, really, really want to get to. And so I am just going to make a quick pile of possibilities. Nonfiction November is an event that was begun uh, about eight years ago by Olive at a book Olive. And her information is going to be down in the description box so that you can uh, go over and watch her announcement video. But she really just wanted to get nonfiction being much more palatable, much more accessible. And she has succeeded because this has really taken off. This is my fourth year. Uh, participating in nonfiction November. I love nonfiction and so I am so excited to be doing this again and Olive has prompts and there are other things that are going to be happening. She is putting up her kind of recommendations later this week so don't miss that and like I said everything will be linked in the description box. She put up some challenge prompts and some other things to help us kind of work our way through a nonfiction TBR. And I just wanted to go over that today. And um, so her four prompts are border, record, element, secret. I already have a big pile of books that I want to go through possibly and so I am going to just try to fit these into the prompts that she gave us. So I will really quick put my books up on the screen so that you can see what they are and I will try as I go through them to let you know what prompts I think they would fit. So the first one is Martin, Martin, Marvin, Sheldrake's An Entangled Life. And this is all about fungi. And so I have been wanting to read this for a while and I have been saving it for November. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I think that this will fit into two of these prompts. I think it will fit with secret because mushrooms are something you actually have to go and search out usually, um, especially certain types of mushrooms. So I think that it could go in the secret category because even some of the mushroom hunters that I know don't reveal where their hunting grounds are. They keep it secret. And then also it would fit with element because it is a part of earth and earth, fire, water, and air are the four elements. So it would fit with that one also. The next one that I have is World of Wonders and this is by Amy and I cannot pronounce her last name. It will be right here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this one I am going to put into the same two categories. I'm going to put it into secret because it's little known or, or very obscure uh, things that exist in water and on land and um, that are supposed to just be full of wonder. And so I think that it would fit with element and I think it would fit with secret. Um, the next one is what it's like to be a bird. And this is by David Sibley. And I had one of David Sibley's um, bird identification books 
when my kids were growing up. It was what we used to go and identify birds. And he has now written this book and it is written from a bird's eye point of view. <laughs> and so I am going to count this one for record because he is making a record of how birds think about things and what they do at certain times of year to prepare and what they what's important to them and all of that kind of thing. So I thought that it would fit in record. It would probably fit with element as well because birds are of the air and the earth. And then the next one that I have is one of my travel uh, journals and that I've been waiting to read. And it, the one that I chose to read this month is Hidden Places, this is by Sarah Baxter. And I am counting it for border because I think she's going to cross several borders in order to tell us about all of the hidden places. And then it could also count for element. The next one that I have is The Collector, and this is by Jack Nisbet. And it is about a famous naturalist from my area. So I am back living in the Pacific Northwest, and this book in particular is about a famous naturalist that was specific to the Pacific Northwest. And so I love collecting pine cones. I love collecting rocks and feathers and leaves and nests and anything else. I love it. If I could have a room just for those kinds of collections, it would be full to the brim uh, already. Go. I just love nat natural collecting. And so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. The next one that I have is by Tim Burkhead, and it is The Wonderful Mr. Willoughby. And again, it's about a naturalist. I think Mr. Willoughby is maybe 1600, and he was one of the first naturalists. And so this is all about his life. I picked up the bee uh, at a library sale and it's The Bee, A Natural History, and it is by Wilson Rich. And I was saving it specifically for November, so I'm really looking forward to finding out all that I can about one of my favorite little creatures. Um, Ghost Empire by Richard Feidler. And this is a book that I actually have already read uh, and I loved it. And I read it, I think, either at the very end of 2017 or the very beginning of 2018. And I read it because um, Christy Ann Jones, who is a Australian booktuber, author tuber, was reading it and she just loved it. It is about Constantinople. Richard Feidler took his son when he was 12, I think, and they did a father-son trip and, and learned all about Constantinople, its borders, uh, how those borders changed, and how the records and who was ruling it and all of that kind of thing and how all of that changed the area and the face of the people, the country, the food, all of that. So I'm looking forward to rereading that again. And did I say that uh, B was for both record and element and the wonderful Mr. Willoughby was also for record the next one I have is The Hidden Life of Trees. Again, I don't know how to pronounce this author's last name, 
So I'm putting it up here and hopefully by the time I review it, I will have a better understanding. <laughs> the Hidden Life of Trees is on uh, how they talk to each other, how they communicate through roots, through leaves, through sunlight, all of that. And so I'm counting this for both record and element. Then I have one called Biased. I wish I could remember who the booktuber was that I saw this book being reviewed on. But I thought this was a great Borders book. I think that it's it's going to make me think about my own borders, um, both mentally and emotionally, and maybe even physically. I don't know. I just know that it, the the kind of the tagline of this book is that it's going to make you think about all the ways that you could be biased about things that you aren't even aware of to make you aware of those things and move you forward, hopefully. The next one that I have is called Sea Room. And this is by Adam Nicholson. And this is about a, a island off the coast of Scotland. Adam's father had a, answered an ad to be able to buy an island. And I think it was in like the 1960s when he bought it. And then he passed it on to Adam and Adam was getting ready to pass it on to his oldest son. And he wrote this record of the sea room. I'm also thinking that it could be counted for border because it's gonna have its own little border of the island itself that it is speaking about. The next one is The Writer's Map. So this is actually a book, I don't know if it technically counts as nonfiction. I'm counting it as nonfiction because these places exist within fictional books and this cartographer made maps of those places and put them in a book. So I'm counting it as nonfiction. They're making it a true place by putting it on the map. And I think this counts very well for borders. And then I have The Ring of Bright Water. And this is by Gavin Maxwell. <laughs> And uh, this also takes place in Scotland. It is in the Highlands of Scotland, and it is about uh, two otters and the man or the boy that they befriend. And I saw that Shelley had this on her list also. So we are going to buddy read that one. So that is a definite for me. Um, I think most of these are going to be definites, but, but we'll see. Those are the books that I currently have either on hold at the library, on their way in the mail, or already have on my shelves. So those are my nonfiction choices. Do you guys have your nonfiction choices yet? Have you have you been thinking about it for months like I have been? I am just so excited to be reading some nonfiction and I know that it won't be exclusively what I'm reading, but I, I just can't, I just can't wait. I'm so excited for it. One thing I don't have on here um, that I really do want to do is that I usually put some sort of spiritual or religious uh, text in what I am reading in uh, November, but I just haven't decided on one yet. So if you have any suggestions for me, leave them down in the comments. But yeah, 
that's my that's my list so far. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you have any questions or any suggestions for me, please do tell me. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Oh, oh, oh. thank you.